On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to see how easy it is for Visual Studio users to adopt Git and GitHub for all your source control needs. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today are Sachin and Samit. Hey, guys. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're going to be talking about source control which on the face of it seems like a pretty dry topic, but we're going to be talking about using Git and GitHub to do your source control and how easily integrated, how well integrated it is into Visual Studio and how easy it is to do source control in Git. So it actually winds up being a pretty exciting topic. Absolutely. There's a yeah. lot of interest in it. Um, so, Yeah, Git and GitHub are absolutely exciting stuff to talk about. And today we are going to learn about how easy it is for GitHub users to start using GitHub Okay. and safely bring the open source workflows within their companies. So before we begin, like before we begin and teach about how to do that, let's step back and just say why. Why should I move my source code management to Git and GitHub in particular? I know that's a great question. You know, you always start with why. Why do you have to care about something? Uh, Git is a modern version control system. You know that has won you know the hearts and minds of developers worldwide. You know it has become the leading choice. You know for many teams, uh, and uh, you know it's the number one version control system out there in the industry. Uh, there are several factors that contribute you know to the success of Git. Uh, um, it's free, it's open, it's lightweight, and it's mm -hmm. distributed. Uh, but a top factor for the quick success of Git, I would say, is the GitHub. You know, the GitHub provides you know, free repositories for open source public projects. Uh, we have about you know, 100 million repositories with uh, 33 million uh, uh, developers you know, uh, actively you know, contributing on GitHub. Uh, it also provides GitHub Enterprise you know, for organizations that demand security, compliance, and more deployment controls. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. So, so GitHub Enterprise are they public repos or are they private repos? They are private repos. You know, you, you know, when you want to bring that GitHub, you know, the open source development, you know, back into your organizations, you know, inside the firewall, that's GitHub Enterprise for you. Awesome. And those numbers were impressive. You said thirty-three million developers, right? Such that is correct. And a hundred oh. million. So that's. On average, three, so I'm above average. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, so, so Sachin, how, is Git exa how exactly is Git different from, say, Subversion or TFVC? Yeah, so uh, unlike you know, TFVC or Subversion, Git is a, di uh, is, is a distributed version control system. So what that means is uh, you know, the changes, the historical data is not stored on the, you know, on the central server, but you know, every developer uh, ha gets a copy of the repository you know, downloaded onto their machines. Uh, so that means you, know, you can do all your version controlling within your local repository. You could do that even when you're offline. Right, uh, and when you come back online, when you get connection to the server, you can you know push all yeah. those changes, and it's a lot faster too. Uh, that is right, right. So this is you know uh, completely different from central uh, version control system, where you know every developer has to be connected and you know to the to the uh, central server. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, but then if I'm new to Git, will that be a steep learning curve? That's a good question. Uh, GitHub provides you know several uh, uh, options for you, like you know GitHub Desktop and you know GUI that makes it easy. But you know having said that, if you are uh, new, completely new to the distributed version control system model, uh, there could be a learning curve. Uh, but you know, thanks you know to Visual Studio. Uh, we make it so easy for our Visual Studio users. We have a GitHub extension uh, that makes it so easy for developers to connect and download and work with GitHub. Yeah, like most things, there's a there's a command language you can use. You can go into the command window yeah. and type git commands, which is not a bad way to learn it the first couple times, like right? push, pull. You get yeah. to learn what those mean, but pretty quickly. You know, a lot of people, me included, get tired of typing, and we just want it integrated into Visual Studio and let Visual Studio do all the work. Um, so, you know, same thing with Azure Portal, right? You can do everything in the portal. Um, not a bad idea to play around with the CLI and the commands, but you know, eventually you might want to just head back into Visual Studio and let it do. You know, like me, once you get familiar, you, you like to yeah. use the CLIs, mm -hmm. and you know, that's yeah. much faster. Yeah. But also, you don't want to toggle bit between too many applications and windows. You want to work from one place. And yeah. for a Visual Studio user, of course, that one place is Visual Studio. Yeah. yeah. So you want to show us? Oh, yeah, sure. So um, let me get my get to my machine here. So you, as you can see, I have Visual Studio 2019 yes. installed on my Brand machine. New so this Visual is the latest. 19, 2019, yep. 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 yep, just released a few weeks back. Uh, so what uh, you see is right on the startup page, You know, we have an option for you to uh, connect and download and work with GitHub. Uh, that's because we have this extension that comes with the installer. 
So you can install it, you know, when you install Visual Studio 2019, uh, yep. or if you are like, you know, if you haven't upgraded to 2019 yet, you know, you are a 2015 or a 2017 user, you can go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and download that extension and install it. Right. Uh, once you have it installed, you know, you can connect to GitHub from here. But I'm going to start from, you know, from the scratch. I'm going to show okay. you how to, you know, put a project into GitHub first. So okay. let me uh, uh, open up a project that's on my local uh, machine here. So I'm opening up this Parts Unlimited project. And this is not yet on uh, any it's version control man. system. Tony's making a huge comeback. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Mickey Gusset was on the last show. He was using Parts Unlimited. You guys are using it. It's a old. Oh, sample, I'm a big, but, big, big but fan of uh, Gene Kim, and you know I have read his, you know, uh, uh, Phoenix it's project. A Parts many Unlimited times. Renaissance here on <laughs> Toolbox. <laughs> so um, let me open up my project here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to like you know place this into a version control system. So here. As you can see, and as you can expect from Visual Studio, mm -hmm. you have uh, you know uh, uh, options. So I'm going to add this, and you will notice you know from the output window, a new Git repository you know is created by Visual Studio. So this mm -hmm. is a local Git repository. Right. Right. So now now you know a, a version control is created. Now I can start you know making changes. I can do you know the equivalence of you know checking my code. Uh, and when I'm ready, I can push this to my uh, GitHub. So right. as you so can the see, key there is you. This is now under source control. Uh, using Git, which is basically the source control plumbing, and then you could just use Git locally. You don't have to use GitHub. You don't have to use the other places that support Git, like Azure DevOps, and there's others. Um, so what? Uh, again, getting back to one of the benefits of Git is because it's distributed, you can do it all locally. And if you're never going to share the code with anybody else, and you're never going to uh, not, if you're never going to use more than one computer. And you don't want a backup stored somewhere else, <laughs> then you wouldn't have to put the code someplace like GitHub. But you probably want to. You want to do no that. No other right? reason <laughs> than to have the backup and then be able to go home and fire up your home machine and be able to work on the code. Uh, absolutely. Also, it's a lot about collaboration, right? Like mm -hmm. so, a lot of the, as we know, a lot of the largest open source projects, including Visual Studio Code, yeah. they have they have been developed because of the the innovation happened because of collaboration of a lot of developers. Right. So at least. Within an enterprise, in the context of private repos, you do want all your other colleagues to contribute to your code base yes. to innovate. Now I'm going to show that, like you know, we call this the code workflow in GitHub, uh, the pull request. Uh, before I go there, let me put this in uh, to my uh, okay. uh, 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 GitHub repository. So here I go to my GitHub tab, and I, as you can see, you know, it says this repository is not yet on GitHub. So I'm going to push this. Let me adjust this window. Let me close this. There we and go. I'm going to click on Get Started. Um, you know, if you have not logged in before, it's going to prompt you to log in. But since I've logged in, uh, I don't have to do that. I'm going to click on Publish to GitHub. So at this point, I just pick you know the account that I want to use. So you can see, like I have a few accounts, and mm -hmm. I have my personal you know uh, free uh, GitHub uh, public uh, repositories, uh, or I can choose my you know GitHub Enterprise. So I'm going to put this into my Enterprise uh, repository, and I'm going to publish this. So now my code, you know, is published onto and GitHub. And if you have two-factor authentication set up, you'd get notified, yeah. right? That's so right. At this point, I typically have to get my phone out. And I use the Authenticator app. That's much easier. Yep. <laughs> right. So and there you go. So the a repository has been created. Now you know a developer. I mean, others can go in and check out the code mm -hmm. and start working on it. Um, I can show you that. Like you know, let me switch to a different machine here. Uh, now this is uh, uh, you know Visual Studio 2019 again, but on a different uh, 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 you know inside a virtual machine. So I can show you like if I'm another developer, my, I'm, I'm a colleague, and then I can go and check out the code. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I click on clone at this time. I can you know specify you know if I know the URL, or I simply click on browse repository. So it's going to go and fetch that project that we just published. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that, and it's going to get download the code. Remember, this is distributed, so all the code gets downloaded here. I specify you know, where I want to download it. I can choose you know wherever I want. Okay, I'm going to just keep the default, and I'm going to say clone. So that's it. So it gets cloned onto my local repository, and you know it's open. Up, it opens the solution, and now I can start making my changes. Right. So, Sachin, what are uh, we hear a lot about pull requests and branches? So, what what are what are branches and what is a pull request? 
That's a great question. So, see, so a, a big advantage, you know, I mean, to me, like, is the, the, the code workflow process. So when you make changes, you know, often, you know, users create a, a feature branch and keep those changes, you know, isolated in those branches, right? And when it is time and when you want to uh, notify others that you are, you know, ready to merge these changes with the, uh, with the, the main branch, you create a pull request. So it's it's a way of notifying others that hey I have made some changes please you know take a look at you know uh, my changes and you know if you if you like it then you can pull this into the into the branch. So it's a little bit branch. like peer review also within in, within the workflow. That is right. Yeah. So I can it's show. It's also you. a great way of if you're letting other people contribute but you still want to maintain control of the code. Right, so you can make a pull request on .NET, for example, but that doesn't mean your code's going in automatically. The team will review it and then talk to you about it. So that's it's a request, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I like to call that as a merge request. Yeah. Right. So you know that's why you know it's 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 not a push request, but it's a pull request. I right. can you know decide what changes comes into my you exactly. know into my branch. And to your point, Robert, yeah, someone needs to approve before you can go ahead. Right. Yeah. So let me show you that. Okay, so uh, let's assume that I'm going to build an, an awesome feature. So I'm going to go, uh, you know, to my uh, uh, Visual Studio here into the uh, Team Explorer, and I'm going to create a branch. I'm going to create a local branch first. So I'm going to click on New Branch, and I'm going to call this my awesome feature. So I create this branch, and I'm going to check this out immediately. And you can see if you notice this, you know, it was showing master. Now since I've checked out, it has moved, you know, changed to this particular branch. Now all the changes mm -hmm. that I do here stays in this branch. So let me go and make a change. So let me go to my solution here. I'm going to open up a, a C sharp file. And I'm not going to show my coding skills here. <laughs> I'm just going to make some changes. I'm going to make Let's say my awesome feature goes here. So I make this change, I save this, and I need to check this in, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't shown you this, so let us let me show you how you do this check-in. We call this process an uh, commit. So if I go and look at, click my changes, I see, I should see this, and I change this particular file, and if I open this one, I would see what exactly you know uh, I changed. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, check this in with a message, add a, a new line, and I'm going to commit and push this. So when I do a commit, it goes to my local repo. When I say commit and push, it's going to do the local repo and then you know push it to the remote okay. repository as well. So I say commit and push, it goes you know, to the branch. All right. So that's another benefit of it being distributed. You have your own copy. You can commit and work on it until you're ready to let other people see your coding skills. So you might be halfway in between and you haven't figured out, it, it doesn't work yet, it's failing the tests on your machine, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Only when you're ready can you push and share with others. And then you as a team can figure out what the policy is. How long, are you, how long can you keep something checked out before you publish it, right? That's right, yeah. I mean, you can create pull requests at any time, you know, not, yeah. not just like when you're ready you know, to merge those changes, but let's say you, know, you need help, you need advice you know, from your colleagues on how right. to you know, solve a problem, yep. right? You, know, you could do that. So here, you know, I ca as you can see, like, you know, you know, it shows that like, I have some changes in my branch and I can create a pull request. Um, I'm going to go and create a pull request and I'm going to say, like, okay, I'm going to merge, I want to merge my changes that I just created in my feature branch here with my master branch. Um, so I can you know, put in a message and I can say create pull request. So now this goes you know, to my team members who can mm -hmm. come and you know, look at the changes. They can comment and you know, approve my changes. So probably you did some inner loop testing and now you feel safe now to share and get others involved with reviewing your code. That is right. Mm -hmm. So if I switch back you know, to my, the other window uh, and if I go to my GitHub, I should see if I, uh, let me refresh here. So I should see the pull request that I just created. And this is brand new in 2019, the ability to look at the pull requests and approve them from inside Visual Studio. Right? And what I like about this In 2017, you had to go to GitHub to do it, which is not terribly difficult, but again, it's a context switch. Exactly. You do have to toggle yeah. between applications. Right. Yeah. And not just that. Like, you know, if you are looking at like, you know, changes that's uh, kind of not 
code related, it's easier to do it on the web. But if it is mm -hmm. code, I like to use you know, Visual Studio yes. because you know it gives me all. I can use all of the navigational features. I can step into. I can like you know look into uh, different things right. so I can understand the context and then I can you know uh, approve or reject. Yeah, it's your command center. If you will. Exactly. All right, so let me open this pull request. I can see this is you know, initiated by my colleague, and I should be able to see you know the exact changes. Nice. Yep. So if I bring this up uh, again, you know I bring the I see the diff window where I can see like you know what was before and what's the change. Uh, and as I said, like you know if you want to comment, you know you can comment you know directly on the you know on the, on the change here. So I could say like, hey, I like this code. I like this change. I can put you know emojis. I could ask questions like you know how about updating docs, right? And I can, or maybe writing some code that actually does something. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have you know uh, provided my comment. So this comment now goes back you know to the uh, um, to my colleague. He can cool. like you know. Uh, if, if there's any action item, you know, they can, you know, uh, fix that first. And then I can, you know, uh, when I'm done, I can approve my, approve the changes. So at this time, you know, I have said like, okay, the changes look good and it can be merged, mm -hmm. right? To do the merge, you have to go out to GitHub. Okay. Luckily, I have you on GitHub here, so I'm gonna bring this up. So it should upload this on my uh, browser. It takes me to the pull request page and if I scroll a bit here, you can see that like, okay, the approval has been provided and okay. now my changes can be merged into the main branch. Great. I click on this one and one merge is done. Fantastic, so this is like to Robert's earlier point, I can have a lot of my colleagues start contributing, uh, but yet there is, still, there is still control and you still get to approve before code goes into your master branch. Yeah, that increases you know, the quality you know, before you, you know, commit to your changes. Right. Awesome. So, so, so that, that's wonderful, Sachin. Like you showed how we can upload our code, do commits, how to create a new branch, do a pull request, merge the branches, all without leaving Visual Studio. Yes, that is right. Right. And, uh, uh, on, and like you know, we also have integration, you know, with the Azure uh, pipelines and Azure boats that takes it even further. Right now, I can take my code, and with those in, in, uh, integrations, I can set up CI/CD pipelines, yep. and I can also, you know, uh, relate my changes, you know, to the yeah, backlog that's items. That's what Mickey was showing in the previous episode. So, if, if people want to see how to do that, they just have to go back one episode. <laughs> Got it. We yeah. kind of did these out of order, I guess. I didn't really think of it that way. <laughs> we did pipelines and then the week after we do the source control, but that's okay. Got it, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and I guess we can also track commits and uh, pull request mm -hmm. and associate them with work items in Azure boards, which gives full end-to-end -end traceability. Right. Yep. And for Visual Studio users, I think you have even a better news. Are I do, yeah. So we are, I'm happy to announce that we have a new offering, Visual Studio with GitHub Enterprise, which is an easy and economical way for Visual Studio users to acquire GitHub Enterprise. So if you are a Visual Studio professional or a Visual Studio Enterprise subscriber, you can upgrade to this new offering and save money. Uh, you can find more details at the aka.ms slash VS with GitHub. Fantastic. All right. So we looked at today a quick overview of how easy it is to be using Git to do source control from inside Visual Studio. Um, we'll put up some uh, resources where people can learn more. The docs are fantastic. I love, I love saying that. The docs are fantastic. <laughs> um, we'll have links to that um, and uh, maybe just some additional resources. As you mentioned, it's free, it's easy to use. It's great stuff. Thanks so okay. much for coming on the show. Oh, thank awesome. you so much for having us here. Awesome, thanks a lot, Robert. Hope you guys enjoyed that and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.